Okay, so I've started recording. Okay, Josie. So uh, thanks for that. Um, so we were just talking there ab about uh, your experience um, with your son, mm -hmm. sport being a bridge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it seems quite important in this case to sort of recognise um, people's re to really focus actually on the individual, recognise what talents and uh, things that they capability that they bring to the table. Find an area where they can feel confident in. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And that is hugely in research as well, backed by research at the moment. Um, you know, sort of current current evidence is showing that too. But um, so, yeah. Uh, but just I suppose just thinking about the, um, yeah, the area of what would make me hold back a bit, I yeah. think, um, is the challenge that people that are, what I've been what I've been affected by is the challenge of people in my life that have not been accepting of any neuro difference. So if it's not visible, um, you know, then the toleration is um, challenging, as in, well, why don't you understand that? You know, why why didn't you hear me first time? Um, if and it's very not often, visible, then it doesn't exist. No, why can't your child sit still? You know, yeah. uh, I had a lot of that. And and um, so now as an adult, I think as well, even uh, for my son now as an adult, very often he will come across people. Um, and even for myself, being very creative, um, it's, well, uh, why can't you voice that in words? Um, why can't you explain that in a more professional manner? Or, you know, that some of those phrases might come across. Mm -hmm. And so it does make me hold back. Uh, uh, to think, um, have I shared that in the right way? You know, so then I, I'm questioning myself. My yeah. son questions himself, which creates a lot more um, sort of self doubt and low self esteem. Yes, yes, and it was just making me think too, uh, on a kind of in a trivial way. You know, if it hasn't happened on Facebook, it doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. So there's something about that, isn't there? That that you know. You, you know, if somebody can't see it, then it hasn't happened, you know, and you think about all that precious experience that hasn't happened on Facebook, you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's interesting how, you know, yeah, technology's taken over with this sort of flat screen process, isn't it, really? Um, and there's lost, we've lost our sort of substance and, I don't know, just all, almost the sort of um, tangible uh skill really of thinking okay how can we see this differently how can we it, it's okay if someone sees this differently yes yes absolutely absolutely no that's <clears throat> there is definitely a theme of difference coming out in in some of the interviews that I'm doing in in you know which is interesting really I won't, won't go into that just now though yeah sure so, OK, so let's think about then how, how this might translate across into supervision and counselling work. You know, when you've encountered, um, you know, the, the lack of awareness, things that have perhaps made you wince, made you think there needs to be some some education and training here, things that have, might have made you a bit hurt or cross. Um, so, so, you know, can you can you sort of say something about what you in your professional observations uh you know around these these things yeah definitely I think yeah I think um you know when it comes to uh yeah neurodivergence I think uh there's a lot of what I've heard and what I've seen is and what makes me wince probably is the first step is yeah. when when you just you physically see or hear people back off you know it it's um very quickly people I've said to me, or I've heard people say, um, oh, that's not an area I can work work in or work with, or um, it's too complex. Uh, the people, I, the, those people are too complex. So, that, you know, almost speaking about people as objects mm. um, before even realising, or maybe before realising they're forgetting that they're people. Um, so... Yeah, kind of othering, othering people, you know, that yeah. they're over somewhere over there, somewhere they're not me, they're too different and therefore I, I can't go there. Yeah. And somebody um, I more recently spoke to uh, um, within my supervision, uh, my supervisor hat as well. Uh, so uh, 
when I was talking to one of my supervisees and they were discussing and sharing uh, somebody they were had had been working with and supporting um, that uh, it was near impossible near impossible to do anything because they couldn't sit still or they couldn't look at me um, I couldn't get that uh, entombment I couldn't build the relationship you know um, and then it makes me think actually how necessary is that you know it, that's where I go is how necessary is that or is that something that we've been educated to have or it must, we must have eye contact you know, right. when, we're, when we're when we're providing therapeutic work right. or you know I don't know is there something around that that's where my curiosity goes so so when you were saying yes how necessary is that I was going to ask you, what do you mean? Do you mean the relationship or do you mean do you mean sitting still or, or what what was that when you said sure. how necessary is that? So the behavioural. So, yeah, so the relationship, I think, is really necessary. But right. how necessary is it for us to have eye contact or can somebody get up and down? Do they need to sit still for 50 minutes for a session? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, is that OK? And uh, it feels OK to me, but to you know, maybe to other people, it doesn't feel OK. Yeah. 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 OK. So so things that have made you wince, things that have made you so. So in your professional experience about um, uh, sort of supervision and counselling, what, what where else do you feel that there might need to be more more training? Um, I think understanding these, you know, the presentations that um, neurodivergent people come forward with so that neuro difference what what um it means even going back to basics like we've discussed right at the beginning um but i think also knowing that there is there you know there is generally there is a complexity or comorbidity if we think of it in that way um but you know that but that's okay you know we're, we all have a lot of difference maybe we don't share it maybe people aren't aware of it um you know but it's there so i think it's really bringing I think more um, forward, more understanding the differences that uh, brains can have, and that those how those differences may then present in external behaviours, um, but also the needs of someone with a with a with a um, neurodivergence. You know, the needs that they may have. Can we meet those needs within environments within? Um, the social interactions, uh, you know, so time scales or uh, there's things around we must we have to remind ourselves things around um, memory processing and information. Now, very often uh, somebody maybe with um, autism is more likely to have a very good memory um, or, you know, not always, but more likely. And somebody maybe with a diagnosis of ADHD will have less of a of a good memory. So they, they find it more difficult to hold on to information so it's really understanding those unique differences um we're all unique so we're mm. all going to have those differences mm. differently as well so there is a multiple mm. layer here mm. but um can, how much can we open up to that really and be accepting of it yeah yeah so so when we're thinking about th these kinds of um areas then um were there any other thoughts in relation to supervision um thoughts about the main issues there both direct and indirect that you you know that you feel that you know that ought to be um made explicit yeah so i think you know really checking in with someone with how best you know can we support them um, what you know, like we we check it with we'll check it with somebody else as in their preference of their name, uh, and very often we'll we're quite um, astute to that now. We do you know we do work with that and ask people you know is this the name you'd like to go by or you know all that sort of thing and uh, you know, but we forget sometimes to check in with um, what do you need from me to you know to retain this information or what do you need what do you need to um, to do. While yeah. we have this time together, yeah, um, you know, uh, yeah. when when is best the best time? Um, yeah, thinking about a, 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 a daily, an average day for you, yeah. um, but also sensory overload. So also, you know, it's very important to think about um, how hypersensitive um, 
you know, people who are neurodivergent. So, for example, so for me, I always have this plain background um, because otherwise it is too much going on. And, for, and it may be actually when I'm working with somebody um, uh, who has a neuro divergence that I might I wouldn't probably wouldn't wear my earrings I would take off my my snud here you know so I would have less distraction right. um because that could be very stimulating and very uh you know too much it's just too much okay okay and I'm just thinking there because on the one hand I, something struck me like things like you know the idea of walking supervision and being in nature and so on but that could work both ways couldn't it that could be both sort of helpful but also ultra distracting what are your definitely. thoughts on that yeah yeah definitely yeah. so um pace by yeah, pace yeah it, it really is it's, it's yeah. um tailoring a unique yeah. Um, you know sort of way of working with people just but checking in with them very often we don't I think you know we can automatically go into this process of this is what I've been taught this is what I've been shown to do this is what I must do even yeah. almost you know um, yeah. and just making sure that we flex and adapt around that um, you know it's like length of time um, is a big one uh, that people you know, generally would um, shortening Yes. You know, having short, shorter sessions um but if nature works great um okay. being more creative metaphors yes. are really useful but only metaphors are useful if it's within within an interest of someone's right. you know you're working right. with if i if i went off on a tangent and started talking yeah. about um uh i don't know like it for example yeah. and said talked about the, the computer databases like your brain and 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 you weren't you didn't have an interest in it yeah and, or yeah. even a passion for that yeah it's not going to happen yeah. right? so we we could talk about rugby analogies with your son but probably yeah. not about knitting analogies or something <laughs> not that i want to be too gender focused there but you know what i mean sort of thing Absolutely. yeah yeah definitely yeah um, okay. you know, so yeah so we, so again can be much more helpful to process that information because there's already an association yes yes so that's that's the that's the that's one of the keys really isn't it is getting to that that common ground and that area where the person feels confident yes yes so it comes back to that a lot okay so so you know on the, the the million dollar question as far as i'm concerned then is about the recent course as in which i mm -hmm. sort of uh, designed and ran in which you participated is um can you give me a specific example so we, we've we've had a pre-conversation to this so i'm prepared um but of <laughs> how we might have run a session better so this is sort of be again being concrete you know uh, with the needs of the neurodiverse course participants in mind, you know, so so we've got both the idea of how we might run a session better and also what's helpful and why. So can you talk talk around that, Josie? Yeah, sure. So um, the person centred sessions are really, really useful because it, it it's literally person centred, it's led, isn't it? Person led. So they they were great uh, and so as a model. It's a really, really, really useful model. Again, research would suggest you know, to, to follow that. Um, I think what's challenging um, is can be the basics sometimes. So thinking about the environment, the lighting, the temperature of the room, you know, you could be chatting away, uh, for example, you know, I could be chatting away to my son, for example, but if he's hot and I'm not, <laughs> you know, he won't listen to anything I've said whatsoever. So, so those, you know, he'd be much more worried about being hot or irritable or his clothes are, are too heavy or, you know. Um, so I think um, checking in with basics first, really, you know, thinking, OK, is does this work? Is this a quiet space? Um, and um, sometimes as well, you might find um, that there'll be chatty people. Uh, and again, those social boundaries can be quite confusing um, for somebody, you know, with a neuro difference. So they may chat away after you've talked, but that could look quite rude, you know, as in, you know, if we're trying to deliver a lecture uh, or a presentation um, and then you um, continue to talk, but that there's like mm. you know, maybe mm. a couple talking yeah. or you know, yeah in yeah. the background well yeah. that could be their processing of your last slide 
So sometimes having more breaks can be much more helpful. Um, and make and also creating this this space of um, it's OK, you know, it's OK to be confused by this. Um, the acceptance of, um, you know, I mean, and you did actually say this, which was great, was you know, no question is a stupid question. You know, let anybody got any questions about this. The hard part is actually, again, is that reframing of stepping forward. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that won't want to speak out. Um, so again, maybe offering that space in between, maybe at break time or in between sessions, anybody wants to talk about anything or ask me anything, yeah. um, please yeah. come and do that. But it may be actually let's maybe leaving some post-it notes. There's that there's a thing of being anonymous that's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um things I might not, you know, they may be just leaving that out, some more practical ideas. Um alternatively, the, the extra bits really are all about being more creative, um, making things tangible. So um, mm. you might have a PowerPoint slide, which is great, but then maybe drawing that out again, maybe on a flip chart paper, seeing yeah. it differently, maybe having paper on the floor and um, sh or on a table uh, and showing it maybe in a, di in a diagram, diagraphic way, maybe with pebbles or, or, or buttons or, you know, um, or in a sculpt is what we talked about before yeah. you know sculpting yeah. something out you know let's that physically move is you know it, it moving is really really helpful um when somebody is sitting with a lot of anxiety which um most neurodivergent people have uh, a high level anxiety they'll either be suppressing it so they don't stand out and you can't see it mm -hmm. um and they don't want they'll mask uh, the process so um, they don't look different um, because it's very important to blend in and, and be the same socially. Uh, but by holding all that anxiety in, as you could imagine yourself, mm. you know, it's going to come out, isn't it? And the way I mm. sort of describe it is a bit like a bottle of pop, you know, so you're shaking your fizzy pop all the way through the lecture, all the way through the presentation, you know, um, it's going to come out at some point. It's, you know, it's going to it's going to explode, isn't it? Or yeah. when the lid does come off it really explodes yeah so um so you know just having that space and time um to be able to move integrates an activity into a presentation but also helps yeah so uh, what i'm getting from that is something about i think the the sort of more creative you can be possibly the better and uh, sort of breaks and uh, sort of small spaces where people can come forward and say something about, you know, have an exchange without it being uh, too public um, and and where you can feel comfortable. Um, the, the sort of environment, which sometimes we can do something about, but sometimes we can't very well, you know, in the old building that we're stuck with sort of thing. I'm thinking we don't have, in fact, <laughs> the radiators actually went off a couple of weeks ago and it's taken two weeks to get them back on, you know. Wow. So, yeah. yeah, so sometimes the environment isn't very flexible, but, um, uh, you know, I guess one can sort of do what one can within that. Um, as you say, there's this balance, isn't there, between perhaps things being overstimulating and understimulating sort of thing. So, you know, I'm thinking of the movement and moving into sculpts and all of that, which I think is great. And that's that's where I like sessions to be at. But on the other hand, could some of that be overstimulating for some or or is that sort of what's what what are your sort of thoughts on on that balance really definitely yeah so you're absolutely right and this is where this is the challenge where you were saying earlier really about you know how yeah. do you manage a group of you know uh, children yeah. in school for example mm. um or teaching a group of adults yeah um so yeah absolutely it could be yeah it could be so i think having the choice which i again um you know i reflected on and evaluated you know offered in my evaluation yeah. was always offering the choice so yeah. um right that there's the option yeah this is we could do this or we could do this or we could if we do a sculpt we could do it in a smaller room or we could do it in a larger room you know um is there a preference the again the hard part is stepping out and for people to voice that they want something different yeah yeah so you know as if there's an option of 
offering that in an anonymous way. Um, you know, it may be let's tally on a piece of paper uh, as you go for break or, you know, and, and again, the adjustments are really good as well anyway for people to, um, you know, to, to, to put themselves out there a little bit and try it. What will ha the only thing will happen if somebody's overstimulated is they'll be more exhausted and more tired. Um, so by the afternoon, you might find that that particular person is, uh, you know, their, their batteries need recharging maybe right. quicker than ours would yeah. than a, a neurotypical person. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's that's. Uh, yeah, that made me think of a few things there in, in relation to that. Um, yeah. OK, so. All right. Well, getting to the the notion of um, I mean, thanks for that feedback. And I think. Yeah, there's a there's still more that we can do. Yes, what I was thinking about was that we could, with the the way that teaching is at the moment, is uh, it's a bit like going to the theatre these days, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. everybody's got their mobile phones out, and then they put them away at the last minute. You know, and then the the play might be or the show that you're seeing might take some time. And I think it's really hard for younger people to keep their phones off for that period, you know. And so people are used to being sort of multiply stimulated, aren't they? So I think the idea of sort of shorter breaks in certain different ways is 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 a good idea, if you see what I mean, because people's concentration isn't so prolonged. Yeah. Would, would that be fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that that kind of fits in with the bigger bigger issue as well. Yeah, because there's multiple things going on. You know, your concentration is being held. You're holding your concentration, but you're also processing information and you're also being stimulated by the environment. So it's that multi, uh, you know, activity really that sometimes yeah. that we as a neurotypical, you know, we could very easily take that this is what we do and this is the norm. And, you know, I can shut out those distractions and, um, you know having a new difference actually sometimes like that's very hard to do yeah yeah okay okay so i'm thinking now we've got some questions there about supervisors challenging issues of neurodiversity thoughts around that and what are the questions that need to be asked should be asked what am i not asking and i note that you've put up on the presentation here some uh questions um you know that's relating in part to what you've already said mm -hmm. um and uh, also making me think about your sort of um top tips which you may or may not have said but yes wh where are you with this in your experiences of being a supervisor have there been things that you have felt should have been challenged that haven't been that sort of thing you know that with your the experience that you've yeah. developed in this area Josie yeah, sure. I think um, I think uh, there are areas. Um, I think probably more around where people, where I've heard, you know, uh, at the colleagues, for example, um, just really struggling still with some of the, you know, some of the sort of processes that feel so really old. Like I was going to say archaic, but probably not that old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, we feels like we, you know, as a society, we've moved on so much with any any diversity you know uh, any diverse area really um but it feels like still with um uh with an nd presentation or any sort of nd flexing or adapting it feels like that's still really challenging it's like uh it's it's um like you said really that sometimes it's not possible to adapt or flex sometimes it's not possible um to support somebody um differently um but you know i don't know i feel so curious about that i just think yeah. is it i don't know i think it may be you know i think maybe we just mm. need a bit need to be a bit more open and a bit more accepting to uh being more creative that you know things aren't rigid they're not linear you know so how can we you know, change things, change our own views really around things. And I think that's where the education comes in really more than anything. Yes, yes. And I was only thinking that in terms of a, a concrete environment that's difficult to, you know, to, to sort of shift unless you, you moved it to another environment. And, you know, I, I suppose, but thinking about, you know, NHS battling with resources, you know, people practically having fights over room availability and things. 
yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. it's 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 such a challenge at the moment, those sorts of environmental things, even before yeah, people yeah. get in the room, you know, is the fact that we've got the rooms, you know, and that sure. sort of thing, which yeah. some people would resent because some people are packed into too tightly into offices or something, you yeah. know. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think one thing, I mean, you know, there's there's this fine balance, like you said, about going out and about. But I think one thing we did on the course, was, which was great, was the sort of, you know, really getting out. And yeah. um, I was very aware, you know, um, that, yes, there was lots going on and there was lots of stimulation, but there were also areas where there was less. Yeah. So we might not be able to eliminate everything um, or change everything. But we may be able to just limit or reduce, you know, we may be just, just that slight difference can really make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, absolutely. No, we've got to, we've got to keep fighting. We've got to keep yes. working on it. I don't, <laughs> certainly I'm against any sort of complacency in that. Mm. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's sort of where it is, isn't it? Now, when we sort of talk about what other questions need to be asked, what should be asked, what am I not asking you? And I like what you've got to say here, what to say to autistic people, for example, in this, um, uh, which obviously is a subset of the neurodiverse. Um, so you've got you've got some questions here. We champion difference here. What are your strongest skills? Mm. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, would you like me to advocate with or for you um the event is optional we will not and we won't take offense if you cannot join us so you've got you've got a series of of sorts of things that might be helpful for people mm -hmm. um are there anything else that you think that people often don't ask about this or don't really attend to i think um there's one I think challenge or can be a challenge is yeah. when we recognize or notice presentation where or maybe we might see a difference in behaviors or and we have our own knowledge of that um uh yet there may be you know that person may be undiagnosed or have no diagnosis for whatever reason um that um just putting it out there you know and mm. say you know and just mm. checking in you know how does anybody does i know how do you feel mm. um that uh, you know are you new neurodivergent do you feel you have a neuro difference um, yeah it, so, so I think just it's almost like the elephant in the room because mm. it still feels there's like a huge stigma around it yeah you know yeah. so I think that that feels really transparent and just opening it up and just you know what do you think do you think you have any of these presentations characteristics behaviors you know and it's okay that's okay if you do or, you know but it's just checking in I think it's important yeah yeah okay okay so let's have a look at the the one of the end slides here so current debate um where in your in your observations uh where where do you think it focuses so i use these uh pictures yeah for this question i mean yeah i think actually yeah, and i really wanted to just think about okay where are we at where are we at as a society as a world you know globally even if whatever you know um research evidence would suggest that actually we're still you know quite far behind um when we're not in that accepting era um, of fully recognizing um, or moving away, for example, from the autism or autistic spectrum, you know, this this um, yeah. invisible linear line, you know, where yes. are you still see people very often go, oh, where are you? Are you sort of down here or up here? Or, you know, how far right. do you think you are? You know, um, so right. that still happens a lot. So I think, you know, moving from that um, and, and sort of looking uh, as at neuro difference uh, right. as a set of sub skills. Right. For example, you know, social yes. skills, yes. um, you know, um, emotions. How do we, you know, how do we manage those emotions? Having emotional intelligence, and a lot, and some of that may be the difference. Um, and you know, but that's okay. You know, thinking about hygiene or routine or or memory. You know, exec the executive functioning levels. Um, how well do we process? Uh, you know, information or manage information or organize ourselves. Um, you know, when we think about doing things, you know, we need the motivation to want to do that. Yeah. Um, and very often, um, 
ADHD presentation, you know, research would suggest that right now it's really high that um, motivation is really challenging because motivation comes from emotions, uh, which is difficult already. Um, but um, if there's no task or no drive, very much to sort of go reflecting back on my son, um, then the, then there's no need to have an emotion called emo called motivation. You know that yeah. it's not even going to be considered. Um, so continually then from there, I think it's really thinking about look, there are you know, neurodiversity is out there, and we all might have, you know, uh, or you know we might have a different colour brain if you want to think of it in that way, maybe or different colours in our brain, you know, and at different levels they might be working differently for whatever reason. Um, the biggest message I think is really accepting, accepting the difference in it, you know, being open, being curious and maintaining that rather than maybe, you know, really moving uh, into the diagnostic, the medication, you know, actually, yes, there, there's a part for that to play, but realistically where we need to start is start with the basics, mm. you, know, you know, really understanding um, people individually. Some of it strikes me as just being, you know, for people to be bothered enough to look under the surface. I agree. You know, yeah, and and yeah, it's kind of shocking how unbothered people can be not to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, there could be a lot of other things there, couldn't there as well? Yeah. You know, if we have you know professional, um, you know, um, burnout and 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 yeah, yeah. Other reasons yeah. why somebody's having a bad day, but. Yeah. But yeah. but nevertheless, you know, I think I think there's something about there's a work and a task involved in sort of getting underneath it and exploring it further. I'm just noticing here, Josie, on this chart, you've included something called the double empathy problem. Mm. So just tell me what that means before we leave this slide. Sure. So this is really interesting. This is just a bit of something new that's come out really for me is yeah. um, especially, you know, um, neurologically. So. Um, uh, what has always been recognised in research is that um, uh, any enemy um, who's neurodiverse um, struggle, they struggle with uh, emotions. So then they struggle with empathy, you know, um, understanding the sort of the theory of mind process. You know, um, if you're hurt I and I'm not hurt, then I might not think you're hurt. So I don't understand it. So that social reciprocity isn't there. Um, what is being recognised more and more now is that it, it can be there. You know, it can. And if we dismiss that it's not there, then we dismiss or maybe even don't offer any empathy. Right. So then we right. become in this sort of have this like double yeah. empathy process. Yeah. That's actually, it's, it is helpful to offer it, um, even if it's not recipro reciprocal. Yes. Or even if the person doesn't appear to respond to it, the fact is that they may still be responding on some level yeah in internally yeah it could be a huge response yeah in, and again yeah. you know when we think about um things like psychometric measures yeah. and that's slightly different but you know when we're measuring our work and our outcomes and what we're doing um you know again research suggests right now that actually it's much more helpful to have a somatic symptom scale mm. you know rather than being driven by you know these sort of cognitive questions you know, there's a fixation with cognitions. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, yeah. there could be a fixation around risk and yeah. death. You know. Yeah. So, is that helpful for us as professionals, or actually, do we really need to know what's going on in the body? But it's also making me think about the idea of trust. And um, you know, I'm thinking as a as a group therapist. You know, I had somebody in my group for three years, not saying a lot in the group, who made massive progress. But, you know, the, the, you couldn't see it. Um, uh, I, the reason that I knew about it was because I, I saw the person individually as well from time to time. And they just got so much out of it. But they weren't because of their past and so on. The trust was difficult to for them, very difficult, very challenging. So in that group, they weren't ready to sort of do a lot but you know in in a following group they would be sort of thing so sometimes some somebody can appear impassive or or slightly on the outside 
but if the if the environment is safe there actually there may be a lot of work going on under the surface i don't know if that makes yeah. sense to you and yeah no, it does yeah. um, i was just thinking there was something that yeah. um I wrote down that something that oh that uh, yeah that Dan Siegel he's a he's a big yeah. advocate for yeah, yeah. Uh, you know sort of neuro difference yeah. and supporting especially children at young age yeah and he believes in the four stage process and the first stage as you said that the first stage is safe yeah you know if yeah. you're if 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 you know we're feeling safe that's the yeah. first step you yeah know, then it then it's to be seen yes you know. Um, yes and that's then it's right find, finding ways to soothe and then it's yeah. being secure you know so yeah. yeah absolutely links to all the attachment theories as well yes yes absolutely no thank you Josie that's uh, made explicit that link well well the the other thing that we had to share was the the sort of the references um so all right so we talked a bit about the current debate and then you you talked to me. So would you like to say something about the references that you've you've popped up there? Yeah. So the references that I've um, added on here um, are link with uh, the information that I've shared with you today. But yeah. Also, um, the sort of uh, most current, I would say as well, sort of um, uh, treatment programs, I suppose, that's in, a, in a very that's in a very medical way of saying it. But so the pro you know, I think that books that could be really helpful um with both um uh, autism and, and um depression especially um tony atwood and michelle garnett are huge um you know researchers in that area uh, and also then adhd uh and yeah. isla, isla russell again she's you know uh, big in in there so yeah there's some and so there's yeah. some also some documents as well some much more current doc documents uh moving forward with them um, exploring um you know vocabulary and terminology which is a bit again similar to what we were talking about uh, so, and yeah. yeah and actually again that lovely paper on the bottom right there you know it's not rocket science you know right. it it really is not rocket science and uh why are we making it so hard right right okay so there might be a bit of an avoidance that going on there yes yeah yeah and and what about videos and things like that? Have you got any, you know, or TED talks yeah. or anything that's around? Not that I know they're not written down there, but anything that occurs put, to um, as we speak. Yeah, there might be. I think there's a final slide. I think I might have put them on another ah, slide. Right, I mean, I there think. is another slide. Let me just double check that, Josie. Sorry, there I'm are some, Okay, I think, let's see. I think there might be another slide yeah. there. Just with them on. Ah, you sort of yeah. you fooled me there. You fooled me. So go okay. on. Tell me a bit about these. Yeah, so the top one is um, is a really good YouTube um, clip uh, with Lego. Um, right. It's like actually my favourite, which is why I put it on there. Um, so it really Excellent. describes and, and explores neurodiversity with Lego figures. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's something about yeah. it for me that just really does show it, you know, in a creative way. Um, yeah, so, so um, ask yeah. Dr. Tony, yeah, his blog. So he's yeah. got a hangout. Uh, that's that's Tony Atwood. Uh, yeah. And obviously, again, Judy Singer, who originally sort of um, produced, uh, created the neurodiversity term. Yes. Um, so then, yeah, just a couple more um, bits down the bottom. Mm. Uh, I like I that. Everything we know about autism is wrong. That sounds yeah. an interesting talk. It's a really good TED talk. Um, yeah. And that's, and that's you know, by... Um, I can't remember the name now to my head, but yeah, so she's uh, has probably. autism herself. Yeah. So yeah, um, which is a quite a fun one and just something a bit different. Um, and also um, the other two I didn't pop on yeah. were the, there was a couple of series um, on um, telly. There was a series on telly and then there was a series on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So the one on Netflix is called Atypical um, and right. it's a, of a teenage boy um you know trying to understand and adapt into this world you know that is so confusing um and then there's another series on that was on telly called the a word um, of that. a younger boy yeah yeah with christopher um, eccleston i think yes yeah. that's it yeah yeah so yeah. sometimes just gives us a little bit more of an insight when we go back to the basics of how yeah. do we where do we start and where do we go from this and um yeah all the things that sometimes come with uh school and yeah the, the challenges that like i've talked about with my son really but um yeah so yeah it's some quite some quite fun stuff that's great so is there anything you want to say in closing about neurodiversity in in counseling and in supervision supervision particularly um i think i think 
we can be much more, you know, much more open to this. Um, I think we can be much more open to the neurodiverse world, really. Um, and I think, yeah, if we can bring in and supervision uh, the creativity aspects and, um, you know, it doesn't have to be drawing when people, I just think the one thing sometimes people do cringe is when we talk about creativity, people, that I think a lot of people say mm. to me, I can't draw, Josie. It can, it can you know? be an overused term, it's, can't it? Yeah, yeah, it's not all about drawing. It's not all yeah. about painting, you know. <laughs> It yeah. can be, you know, it can be origami. It could be, um, you know, I could, it could be pebbles and, and buttons, mm. you know. Um, it could be, um, well, Lego, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. But ultimately, you know, it, it can mm. also be <clears throat> get outside. Mm. Mm. Be yeah. Creative with what we can do. Yeah. You know? Or if I can't get outside, or if it's, li or if I'm limited to what I can do, you know, what is it that I could do that, would make a creative difference. It, it makes me think about um, uh, when we've got groups of people also about people sort of sharing their own stories of this in in supervision and in, maybe we 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 ought to get people to share a bit more about that because even if they they may not be um, neurodiverse themselves, they very very likely have experience. Of I think people so. who are close to them, if 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 not them themselves, but I I'm kind of thinking that we've probably all got elements of these within ourselves, uh, even if they haven't particularly held us back. Um, so I think there are a number of ways that we can relate to to this area. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that would definitely. be my feeling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think not being afraid, not being afraid to do it. There's no right or wrong having fun let's just do this you know be more accepting and more open yeah. um you know yeah it's okay yeah yeah yes okay well on that note then thank you very much so if we can just stop the recording now first of all <laughs>